friends, it's Julie, and today I have a core workout for you. This will be a little bit longer core workout than we typically do. We're going to really get in there and work that core, and we're going to do this hit style. So we are going to work for 45 seconds, we'll rest for 15 seconds, and we will repeat each round three times. Each round has two exercises, and we are going to burn out that core. If at any time you need to take a rest, it's totally okay. Rest and then just jump back in when you can. I will also show modifications for anything that might be a little bit more difficult or might be a little bit harder on the back. So don't worry, I will have something for everybody. Are you ready? We're gonna get warm, we're gonna get into this workout, and we're gonna burn out the core. It's gonna be fun, I think you're gonna like it. Ready, here we go, we're gonna do step touches to get warm. So just step touch, side to side. So we just wanna get a little warm before we jump into this core workout. We're gonna get a little mobility here in that warm up and then we will get right into it. So it's just a nice big step touch, swinging your arms back and forth. Make sure that your core is engaged, right? Always thinking about that core. We can be working our core all the time. It's what helps support our body. So very important that we are always mindful of that core. Also strong core helps that lower back, which your lower back is considered part of your core. So we really wanna make sure that we're using the front part of our core to help support the back of our core. All right, we're going to take this in to hip circles. Are you ready? Circle it around and circle it around. Let's get a little bit through that hip there. Yes, doesn't that feel great? Let's get some mobility in those hips. One more on each side. And let's take it to trunk rotations. Boom, just side to side, move through that spine. Yes, okay. Hands on the hip, we're gonna hinge forward and lean back. Slight bend in those knees, flat back. Now, for this one, I want you to stay here. I want you to reach for the floor, even if you've gotta bend your knees, and then I want you to step back to a plank. So straight arm plank, hold it right here, and we're gonna push back to a down dog. So I want you to push through your hands on the floor and try to get those heels as close to the floor as you can, pulling the tailbone up towards the sky. Do you feel that nice stretch on the back of your hamstring? Move on the back. Feels so good. Now go ahead and come back to plank and drop your knees. We're going to round up through our spine. Round up. Just pull it up as much as you can, and then we're going to release that, and bring our chin up. Let's do that again. So we've got a cat, all the way up, and the cat, and lift our chin. One more time. And release. Now right here, real quick, I want you to get into a neutral position, and I want you to swing your hips side to side. Just swing your hips side to side. Shift it a little bit in the side of your waist. Awesome. And back to neutral. Are you ready? Okay. So we're working for time, so 45 seconds. You're going to use your absolute best form that you have and thinking of using your core and not momentum. One of the things that I really want you to be mindful of is anytime we're doing a crunch like movement, I want you to think of your rib cage coming towards your hip bones. Like you are a can crasher and you're going to crush her. Not a crasher, a crusher. You're gonna crush the can between the bottom of your ribs and the top of your hips. And I also want you to think of when you're doing that, the core is lifting you up and not your head. So don't be pulling on the neck to get your body up. Use the core. Even if you're just moving a small amount, we want to activate the core to initiate the movement. So your first two exercises are very basic. Honestly, we're gonna keep this very basic because I would rather go through good form, really use the core, than complicated movements that we don't need to do. We have crunches, just good old fashioned crunches, and then we have oblique crunches. So you are going to lie back, you are gonna have your knees bent, 
And we are going to think of pulling our rib cage in, our back twist, like pressed against the mat, our belly button pulled in, fingertips behind your head, not the whole hand, just the fingertips, elbows open wide in the space between your chin and your chest, like you could fit like a tennis ball. You're going to lift up and come back down. It can be very small movement. Okay, it can be very small movement. So don't think you've got a, you know, momentum up there. <laughs> small movement. Second exercise will be an oblique crunch. Now what I like to do for obliques is take an arm and reach to the outside of my knee to really pull that shoulder off the floor and come back and really pull. Now you can also just be here if you prefer that. I just feel for me, if it gives me something to reach for, I will pull up a little bit more and really get that core activation. Are you ready? Okay, very basic movements. Main thing you need to think about is that back needs to stay against the floor. If we start getting this crazy arc where you can stick your hands underneath your back, that's really hard for your back. So hold that back down, tilt your pelvis ever so slightly up so that your back is nice and flat against the floor. And then we're going to pull the ribs in so they're not flaring and that belly button towards the spine. Yes? Okay. I know you've got this. Are you ready? We have 45 seconds of crunches and then we'll go to the loops. Here we go. Now my fingertips are just behind my head to kind of support my head, but not to pull, right? Because I'm not pulling, I'm not yanking. And right now I'm thinking rib to hip. Closing the distance between my ribs and my hip. My back is pressed against the floor, so my belly button is pulled in. And I'm using my core to lift my shoulders. I know it's a lot to think about. And I just have a slight tilt in my pelvis. That will help keep my back on the floor. Okay, you have five more seconds. And rest. Okay, quick rest. We'll go right into the oblique. And we're going to do that whole set three times. All right, fingertips lightly behind the head. Are you ready? Here we go. Reach, come back down. Now, it is not a race, so it is not how many reps can you possibly get in. It is how controlled can you do the movement, how much can you engage the core. Going through fast without core engagement really won't get you anywhere. So we want to really get quality movements in there rather than quantity. You can do a lot less reps if they're really good than running, you know, trying to race through a hundred of them and not really getting the core activation. And rest. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Now this next time, after we finish our round of Crunches and then a blaze will go straight to the next one with no rest. So that's how our last round will be. Are you ready? Here we go. Crunch it up and back down. Really engage that core. And rest. We're going to go back to the obliques. After this will be obliques, instead of taking a rest, we'll go straight back to the crunches. So we're going to do a little burnout at the end of each round. Ready? Here we go. Up and reach. We want to pull that shoulder up off the floor while the other one stays down. You're reaching as far as you can. 
Keep that belly button still pulled in towards the spine. Okay, in five seconds, we're gonna go straight back to the crunches. Here we go. And up and down. All right, in five seconds, we're gonna go back to the obliques. Here we go. And reach. So your last time through this, and then we're gonna move on. Almost there. And rest. How'd you do? Next two exercises, you have a heel drop. So back stays on the floor, and you're gonna drop those heels to the floor, bring them back up to tabletop. That's your first one. Second one, you're gonna put your feet up towards the sky, reverse crunch. Now, I don't want you to swing way back here. I want you to think of feet straight up to the sky, like you wanna put your footprints in the ceiling. You can also keep your knees bent. And the thing is, is you want to use your core to lift your hips, not momentum, okay? Take a deep breath. So with those heel drops, back stays against the floor. You're really using the lower part of your abs to control that motion, to lightly touch your heels to the floor and bring them back up. Here we go. Drop them, bring them back up. So the main thing here is we want to control that movement. We want to control it on the way down and control it back up. We don't want to use momentum, we want the core to initiate the movement. We have five seconds. And rest. Okay, take a little rest. We're going to do those reverse crunches. So I like my feet up. Because I like to think of my feet going straight up because I want to put my footprints in the ceiling. Like there's paint on the bottom of my shoes and I want to get a nice and good footprint on the ceiling. Ready? Here we go. Of course, I would never recommend that for real. But it gives me an image in my head of what I'm going for. Rather than a big swing and I'm coming back here, right, I want to go up. And that way we really think about the core lifting the hips rather than momentum. With a reverse crunch, it's really easy to use momentum to try to lift. But then we're not getting the most out of the exercise. So we want to think of the core engaging and lifting the hips off the floor. And rest. Okay. We're going to go back and do those heel taps. Now, for the heel taps, for some reason, I like bring up on my head just to cradle my head, even though I'm not crunching. <laughs> Here we go. Drop them. Bring them up. You know, if you find that when your feet touch the floor, you arch your back, then just go as low as you can while still maintaining contact with the floor. So if you can only go here and then come back, that's totally fine. I would rather that than you arch your back. That's really hard on the lower back. And 
rest. Okay, feet up. We're gonna do that reverse crunch. Now, after this reverse crunch, we'll go straight back to those heel drop with no rest. Take a deep breath. Are you ready? Here we go. Up. get messages often from people asking me, how can I lose that around my belly? How can I tone it up? And, you know, I wish that I could say, oh, just do a bunch of crunches and core work and it'll be gone. And that's, I wish it was that way, but it's not. So what we're doing right now is we are strengthening those core muscles, but in order to see any definition or to lose that extra cloth in the middle, Nutrition is going to be the biggest factor. I know it's not what you want to hear, but that's true. So, stick with this, but let's drop it back to the heels. Know that it doesn't matter how many crunches you do or how hard you work that core. If you are eating with a calorie surplus and too much sugar and things like that, you're not going to see this ab work. So, in order to lose body fat, no matter where it is on your body, you need to be in a slight calorie deficit. So that means you eat under what your body needs to burn every day. So if your body's baseline, let's just say is 2,000 calories, then each day maybe you eat 1,800 calories or 1,700 calories. Or you can even do less and just do 100 calories under. So we need to be in a slight calorie deficit in order to see any work that we're doing right now. Cardio can help with that, so if you up your cardio, that can help for a little bit more calorie burn, but it's gonna be your food, mostly. Okay, ready? Back up to those reverse crunches. For different people too, some things help more than others. So for me, reducing sugar helps me with the lower belly each area. And I can't ever completely get rid of that because for some people we're designed to carry a little more fat there to protect the uterus. Some people do not and they carry extra body fat in other places. But for me, the lower abdominal area, I will always have a little extra there. And that's okay, I've made peace with that. But when I reduce my sugar, I see a lot more definition in my core. And same with sodium. If I have too much sodium, I just stay bloated and it's no good. So. For some people, gluten does that to them, or you know, too high in carbs and too low in protein. So sometimes you kind of have to figure out what works for your body, but it's gonna be about your nutrition. And rest. Okay, another round down. How exciting. Okay, so for this next round, you're gonna start on your side. We are going to do mermaid crunches. Let me move my mic a little bit. It's a little bit on it. So what I want you to do is lay with your feet at about like a 45 degree angle. You're gonna be down here. We're gonna take this top arm. I'm gonna give you two options. You're gonna come up and reach and touch, or come up and reach with just one leg. I'm gonna reach with one leg, and mostly because it hurts my hip when I do both legs. I have kind of sensitive hip team dancing, and so when I push my hip into the floor, it's a little bit uncomfortable. So we're gonna come up and touch, come back down, come up and touch, come back down, or you can do both feet together. But we'll do one side, then the other. Then you're gonna come back down, flat on the floor, and we're gonna do what I call a shimmy crunch. You're gonna pull your shoulder blades off the floor, and then you're gonna reach for the outside of your ankles or heels, just back and forth, trying to reduce the space between your rib and your hip, right at your waist, okay? So I like to think of my back like a shimmy, cleaning the floor. Yeah, always back to cleaning with me. Have you noticed this? <laughs> I'm always like, my master game, let's clean it. Well, right now, think of your back, shimmy, back and forth, cleaning that nice spot on your floor. So, mermaid crunches first, and then we will do the shimmy crunch. So, let's start on our side. Okay, so a little bit like a 45 degree angle, and this top arm, we're just gonna come up. Bottom arm is kind of to help a little bit with supporting your upper body. Here we go.
and rest. Okay. Actually, let's do the shimmy in between, and then we'll do the other side of the mermaid. That seems like a good way to do it. Okay. So, are you ready? You're going to pull the shoulders up, and then shimmy back and forth. Here we go. You reach for the heel or the ankle, but keeping the shoulder blades up. We're going to clench that can right between our rib and our hip, right on the sides. But the key is you really want to bring those shoulders up off the floor. Keep them up the entire time. and rest. Woo. Okay, come back around. We're gonna go back to the shimmy crunches. We're gonna do them right in between. Roll it on down. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Shimmy back and forth. Are you cleaning the floor with that back? and rest. Woo. Okay, let's go back to our mermaids. So back to this side. So we got those legs out like a nice long mermaid. Are you ready? Here we go. Up, come down. bend your leg here. So if you cannot keep that leg straight, do not worry. Just bend your leg. You could also just be here. Okay, if that's easier, that's totally fine. Rest. Woo, okay. Back to the shins. We got this. Are you ready? Bring it up. Here we go. Shimmy back and forth. Alright, 
switch it around. This will be our last time being a mermaid, and we're gonna move on to our last round. So on your side, take those legs out. Get that arm ready. Pick whichever variation works for you. Here we go. And rest. Woo. Okay, we're on our last round. I'm gonna give you a couple options here. So, the first exercise is a combination move. So what you're gonna do, this is what I like to do, is lay on back, take your hands, and put your thumbs together and your palms open, and place them under your glutes just like that. This is to help keep your lower back on the floor, because we're gonna do leg lowers. So we start with our legs here. Straight or bent. If straight is too much, then I want you to bend here. So you're going to lower your legs as low as you can, keeping your back on the floor. Come back up, and then you're gonna scissor, scissor. You're gonna lower, come back up, scissor, scissor. Okay, so basically you're doing double leg lower and then one at a time. That's your first exercise. So, modification for your lower back or just your core strength is lower, just like those heel taps we did, one at a time, one at a time with a bent knee, okay? Second exercise is called a windshield wiper. So, you can have your legs bent or straight. What I like to do is take my hands a little bit to the side and you're gonna drop your hips to one side, come back up, drop them to the other, Come back up. Now, here's the trick. You can only lower them as low as they'll go where both shoulders stay on the floor. So if you go here, you see how I just like went to my side? Okay, that's too far. So lower as low as you can, but both shoulders stay on the floor. And then you use the core to bring your legs back to the top. Straight legs will be harder, bent legs will be easier. It's really not about how low you get your legs as much as how much control you have using the core while both shoulders stay on the ground. Yes? Okay. You ready to do it? It's our last round. Okay, so I like to sit under my hands for the leg lower and that's just to help support my lower back and make sure my pelvis stays a little tucked so that I don't get space between my back and the floor. Here we go. Leg lower and up, scissor, scissor. Leg lower and up, Scissor, scissor, yes. And of course you can do this with bent knees. Bent knees, scissor, scissor. Both ways are great. straight legs for one, I'll hit my wall. But for two, I have more control when my legs are slightly bent. And then I like to just put my hands on the floor to kind of be like my support. Here we go. Lower them and bring them back to the top using your core strength. And as long as both shoulders stay on the ground, go as low as you can. Now I do have one side I can go a little lower than the other. And that's okay. And rest. 
Okay, we're gonna go back to the leg lowers. The other thing that can help is if you want to stay up in a slight crunch, that can help to keep your lower back on the floor too. Are you ready? Here we go. Lower. Yes, doing okay? Rest. Okay. We're going back to the wind chill. After this wind chill, we'll go right back into the leg lowers with no rest. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's drop it. Now let me give you another variation that you can do if you want to try to turn up the intensity. Lower your legs, then straighten them, and then come back. Oh, see I hit my wall. <laughs> but that's just another way that you can kind of challenge yourself. All right, are you ready? Back to the leg lowers. No rest. Okay, are you ready? Back to the windshield wipers, no rest. This is our last exercise before we do one quick core activation burnout. We're almost there. And rest. Okay. I have a quick activation burnout for you. So, maybe you've heard of a stomach vacuum. What I want you to do is lay flat on your back here and have your back pressed toward the floor and your pelvis just slightly tilted up. You are going to pull your belly button in towards your spine as much as you can hollowing out your stomach, really like you're sucking it in, right? Have you heard people say suck in your stomach? Okay. What I want you to do is suck it in as hard as you can. It'll make your ribs come out a little bit and it will just hollow in. It's like you're concaving your stomach, right? We're going to do that and we're going to hold it. I want you to hold it for as long as you can, but we're going to try to go for a minute. Okay. Are you ready? It's, a, it's just really an isometric contraction. So you're going to pull that core in as tight as you can hollowing out and concaving the stomach. Are you ready? Here we go, suck it all in. Let all the air out, and then just pull that belly button 
as far back as you can, pulling the centipede where it's making this concave all a little area here, and you're just gonna hold it. Isometric contraction. You wanna keep it in as long as you can. If you have to break before the minute's up, take a break and then try to jump back into it. And just hold it. You don't have to hold your breath. You gotta hold the contraction. You have 10 more seconds. Five more seconds. And if you can't go as high as this in here, that's fine. Just go where you can. Okay, come up. Hands and knees. We're going to push back into that down dog. So push those heels towards the floor and then push that tailbone up towards the ceiling and just stretch. Let's walk our hands back to our feet and roll it to the top. Okay, I want to show you real quick. You get a little closer to you. This vacuum exercise, because you can do this at any time. You can do this while you're brushing your teeth, while you're cooking. So I'm just gonna show you here. Okay, so here in my stomach, I'm standing out normal, right? Okay, I'm gonna pull it in and concave it. Now, from going normal, if I suck it in, I hollow it out. Can you tell me that I'm hollowing it out? And when you hollow it out, you're gonna let out the air and you're gonna hold this pulled in really, really, really tight. And that's where you just hold it. So you can do these vacuums, whatever you're doing in the day. You can do them while you're seated. You can do them lying down. You can do them standing. And one of the things I found for me is if I do those two, maybe three times a day, just for a minute at a time, I have really felt myself activating my core and become more aware of my core. So I would really feel the muscles pulling in and then just holding it. It'll shake a little bit. You'll really feel those muscles. You don't have to do it for very long and you can build up time if you want to, but it's a great way to hold that isometric contraction and practice pulling that core in. So you gotta really think of pulling that belly button in towards the spine, hollowing everything out and just holding that isometric contraction. That will really help with strengthening the core, but also kind of shrinking it a little bit, which is what we want, right? So I just wanted to show you that and just give you a little tip because you could do that throughout the day no matter what you're doing. So sometimes when I'm waiting for my daughter at school and I'm sitting in my car, I'll just do that and I'll just hold it. You don't have to hold your breath. I know sometimes people think I've got to hold my breath. You don't. But before you do it the first time, you want to take a big inhale, let all the air out and then pull it in and you hold that even while you breathe. So, thank you for joining me today. I know this was a little bit longer before workout, but I thought this would be a fun way to just really get in there and work that core. And I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming workouts. Bye.